Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 18 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video and in the next several videos, we'll be taking a look at Flex Time, a feature that came out with Logic 9 and is also in Logic 10. Uh, what Flex Time does is it's a lot like Elastic Audio in Pro Tools or other DAWs. What it allows us to do is it allows us to apply time compression or time expansion to audio waveforms. So this allows us to correct timing issues or rhythmic issues in our music. It also includes the ability to quantize the transients in our audio recording. So that's pretty nice. So what I've got here is electric guitar and electric bass, and we are going to apply flex time to them to fix their timing. So let's take a listen. Alright, so those two recordings, they don't sound bad, but they haven't been edited in any way. Um, so we are going to apply flex time to make them uh, lock up perfectly to the grid. So I'm just going to turn off my metronome for now, and also turn off my uh, count in. I don't need that on anymore. And we're going to click on this icon right here that uh, shows and hides uh, flex. And then we are going to turn on flex on each individual track by clicking here. And what this does is it analyzes uh, the waveform for transients, uh, which are essentially just uh, loud points, um, attack points in the, uh, the waveform. So you can see where each chord or where each note is. So after flex time analyzes the waveforms, we have to choose a specific um, flex algorithm or flex mode for each track. What it's done by default is it's selected slicing for both of these. And notice it says auto next to it. It's automatically choosing slicing as the best flex mode. And there's a bunch of different flex modes. Um, they're all located right here in this menu. Um, we're actually going to use uh, polyphonic for the guitar, and we're going to use monophonic for the bass. Um, it very well may be that slicing is the best choice here based on the material. And basically what our flex modes do, our flex algorithms do, is they um, determine how the audio is treated. So with polyphonic mode, uh, you want to use uh, that for instruments that play multiple notes at a time, like guitar chords, piano chords, anytime there's multiple notes going on simultaneously. For the bass, I'm going to choose monophonic because that's used for instruments that only play one note at a time, like bass or a vocal melody. So what you can do with these transient markers is based on your snap mode, uh, I'm going to choose division for this. Based on your snap mode, you can grab uh, each of these transient markers, and when you click on them, it actually turns them into flex markers. And then you can snap each of these in place based on the snap mode that you chose. So one way to correct your timing is to go and manually snap each one of these transient markers to the grid. I should also mention that when you stretch material or expand material, it'll be shown in white, the waveform will. And then when you compress material, it'll be shown in a darker color of whatever your region color is. So here my region color was blue, so a compressed, compressed material was shown in blue. So another way to do this is to add multiple flex markers um, simultaneously without having to do them each uh, individually. So I'm just going to undo all of these flex markers I made. And what you do is you hover over the middle point of the waveform and you'll get this uh, three line cursor rather than the single line flex cursor. And when you click on that, it'll create three uh, flex markers for you, one to the right, one to the left, and one in the center, rather than just creating one. And you can move the middle one and it will, um, basically the left and right ones will act like a pivot point for the middle one to be moved uh, between. To remove a flex marker, you can click on the X icon just above the marker, or you can simply just double click on the, uh, the flex marker line. Another way to delete flex markers, if you have a whole series of them that you want to turn off, is go to your eraser tool and then swipe over them and it'll delete the flex markers. Now, it doesn't delete the transient analysis, it just deletes the, the, the flex marker. 
So as you can see, if I were to go through and manually edit every single uh, transient marker and put it uh, on the grid, it's going to take a lot of time. So an easier way to do this is to simply quantize the position of the transients in the recording. And so what we need to do is scroll through a recording and look at the grid and figure out what the best quantization value is going to be for our recording. And just by looking at this, I can tell it's going to be an eighth note. So what I'm going to do is select uh, either the region or the track, go over to my region parameters in the inspector over here, go to quantize, and change the quantize val value to an eighth note. And what's going to happen, is, as you can see there, each transient marker turned into a flex marker and snapped to the nearest uh, eighth note on the grid. So next I'm going to take a look at the bass and figure out what the best quantization value for this is. It looks like mostly quarter notes, but there are some eighth note passages, so I'm going to go with an eighth note uh, over a quarter note. And you'll also notice that there's a couple spots where the, uh, the transient marker isn't quite in the right place, like right here at the end. Um, that's just something we'll have to deal with later. So just like we did before, I'm going to use the inspector's region parameters to quantize to an eighth note. Everything is locked to an eighth note. And again, here's another example where the, uh, the transient marker is not in the right place. That's okay. We'll fix that later. Um, one more thing I want to do before I uh, let you hear what this sounds like is back on the guitar, uh, since we're using polyphonic mode, there's a track parameter here uh, called complex. And this is just there for polyphonic mode. You want to make sure you turn that on. Uh, what it does is it pumps more system resources into the polyphonic algorithm to make sure that the quality is at its best. If you don't turn that on, you run the risk of the recording sounding like it's underwater or kind of gargled sounding. So let's listen to what this sounds like. All right, that definitely sounds more in time than it did before, but we've still got some spots like here where the flex markers, and here as well, where the flex markers are not quite in the, the right place. Um, the guitar sounds okay, but there's, yeah, here's another one. Um, they're all in the bass. There's three spots where the flex marker is not in the right place. Now I can double click on those to, uh, to turn them off and they won't be affected by the quantization and they'll be more uh, where they should be. And one way you can fix this is you can create a new flex marker where it should be right here uh, just by clicking and then you can grab that and move it to place. And we can do the same uh, at the end here. We can click right there to create a new flex marker and drag and move it to place. That's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is to uh, correct the placement of the transient markers. And the way you do that is you double click on the region. It'll open up the track editor, which you can also use for uh, flex time down here. If you want to uh, edit in the track editor, you can. Uh, but we're going to use the file editor like we did in the previous videos. And let's zoom out or zoom in here. And what we're going to do is turn on the transient editing mode here. And what that does is it shows all of the transients that were found during the initial analysis. And what we can do is instead of creating new flex markers, we can simply just move the position of each of these transient markers to the right location. So I'm just going to click and drag this over, put it where it's supposed to be. And I should mention that when you move these transient markers, they're not actually flex markers. You're not actually compressing or expanding the audio at all. You're just basically fixing uh, the original analysis. So after you move the transient markers, you still have to go back and either re-quantize the audio or manually move them to place. So this is not a, you know, flex time is definitely not a perfect process. There's a little bit of tweaking you have to do to it to, uh, to get it right. Um, you can also create um, new transient markers by using the pencil tool. Uh, you just click wherever you want and you can put in a, a flex marker, or not a transient marker rather. So if it uh, left one out, you can always add it in that way. So now without us having to really do anything, um, you can see that the transient marker has now been moved to place where it, uh, uh, where it should have been. So, so there you go. So now that we've fixed this up, um, let's uh, take a listen to what we've got. I'm going to turn my metronome back on uh, so you can uh, hear a timing reference, and let's give this a listen.
all right, those sound great. They match up to the grid. They match up to the metronome really well. Uh, one thing you're probably going to want to do is once you're ready to commit to these edits, you are going to want to render them in place or do like a bounce in place. Remember, that's uh, control B. And that will render all of the edits into a new file so that you're not using up uh, any extra system resources. All right, so in this video, we just covered the polyphonic and monophonic uh, modes. In the next video, we'll talk about flex time and drums, and we'll use the rhythmic algorithm as well as the slicing algorithm. And then after that, we'll move on to um, the last two, the uh, tempo phone and speed. And then after that, we'll move on to flex pitch. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks again for watching.